Hello everybody, whoops, the double, double take there, young man, how are you? Uh, I think I'm okay, Gary, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Well, greetings and salutations from a, well, it's just all of a sudden got um, super windy, episode number 58 of Waved Yellow, stage uh, 8 of Dakar, it's uh, all exciting, Gary. So, how's our swear jar? The swear jar is looking pretty good, do you know that? Um, First of all, we have somebody who's coming to visit South Africa and he's based in the USA. He's who's that, Gary? Uh, I can't remember his name right now, but he will. I will bring up here. But he's promised to equal what's in the jar. Then uh, George Smallberger, yeah, has promised to donate two hundred. Very good, thank you, George. This is it. for those of you who haven't forgotten you or who have forgotten. You've got a bit of a short memory. For those of you who don't know, we've got a swear jar, so every time I say shit or another naughty word or something like that, um, I've got to put 10 Rand into the jar because you're not supposed to swear. It's a family show and all that cock. So <laughs> I will put 10 Rand in and the, the total money goes to yep. the uh, Spaniel Rescue Foundation that uh, Reggie Roots is sort of coordinating the efforts uh, for the Spaniel. So as they say in the classics, I'm doing it for the puppies. Yeah, we're now sitting at 260, 270, 280 smackaroos. Reggie, you're on a mission, brother. Gary, how did it get that much? Well, because George is putting in 200. So no, 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 that's... Oh, no, 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 then it's Gary, 360. Okay, do me a favour. Uh, Just it, check, my eyes. Comes. check my comes. eyes. Yep. Gary, I need you to focus proper. Okay, brother. Because we started off with, there was no proper countdown, there was just crashing in the beginning. Now we've got, don't worry, focus, Brie, focus, check me out. <laughs> oh, I love this wind. How hot has it been? We know that Joburg is back to normal. We're back at Mug and Bean for probably the last time of uh, Dakar 20, what year is it? 2019. Yeah. Because tomorrow we're off to a secret location that, well, if I told you where it was, it wouldn't be secret. And then Thursday we are going to Moto Moto Burgers and stuff in Pretoria. We've got a, a guest for Moto Moto on Thursday yeah, it at is 6 o'clock. It is provisionally uh, the one and only Calvin van der Linde. Why provisionally? I, told, I, got I just told got a message from him now, which I haven't read. And when we finish the show, I can confirm. Okay, because I was told by production it was signed and sealed. They'd given revised all the transport arrangements because we've got to pick up a world famous, a factory Audi driver in between his 24 hour commitments. I was told, some say. All right. So, um, and then f Thursday is also the last racing day of Dakar. Um, I haven't got an exact schedule of the timing. So hopefully we'll be able to confirm the, the podium in uh, bikes and cars and, and stuff. So should we go back to what happened yesterday, well, Gary? Just, just quickly, just quickly. Richard Bailey from Rokol, or Rokol, yeah. okay, racing, would like to donate 200 Rand also. What a boy, you see, that's on a roll, hey? If anybody um, knows somebody from Motel, we'd like them. Gary, I believe that the guys from Autobahn are still deciding they're looking at the, the sales um, <laughs> and they're still deciding. I'm trying to get... Now, I'm in this debate yes. with myself. Oh, I want to know who wins these debates with yourself. Sometimes I lose my own debate <laughs> with myself. So the debate I've got, yes. I said to mom the other day that if they invited us to the test, the biggest off-road cross-country racing test in the world, where His Royal Highness... His greatness, the one and only, what's his name? Ferdinando. Ferdinand Alonso. Yeah. Comes to South Africa to see if he likes racing a truck and has a go. Um, they, they, it's apparently confirmed, some say. There's hotel bookings. The way to, to work out if there's a test happening. <laughs> you should go and check all the hotels. You go to the nearest hotel to the, to the venue. Test venue. <laughs> and you try and book for a party of six or seven. Yeah. If you can get in 
at that time, the <laughs> test is not happening at that time. <laughs> so uh, I've had production furiously looking at different travel arrangements and uh, all sorts of things. So the idea was, do we push mom for an invite to this test? Yes, why not? Or do we push mom to sponsor some money for the Spaniels? I'm kind of... Both. Gary, I like your thinking. So we'll, we'll do both. So let's go to yesterday. Thank you very much for your, um, your pledges. We really do appreciate it. Never mind me appreciating or us appreciating it. I know the, the Spaniels will. Um, we do it for the puppies. Mm. Oh, talking of which. Yes. Do you, you see that? And that? When you're playing with dogs and you're playing the water game, you know when you've got the hose pipe and you spray it, and particularly a German Shepherd, and they go and they bite um, but the, the water and they think it's more of a fun and because you're hot you're also having fun playing with your clients dogs yes I was nearly said your clients puppies but that wouldn't be right so you're playing with your clients dogs and then you put your hand in the way of the um, of the water that German Shepherd's teeth are sharp Gary there was blood be coming out of my finger well at least you made it here you didn't bleed to death no, I didn't, eh? No, you didn't. It was close. So back to today. There was red stuff okay. in it. No, I want to go to yesterday. Well, I do have the leaderboard as yesterday, if you'd like to have a look at it. I think that's absolutely fantastic. A couple of interesting things on that leaderboard. Yes. Well, we've kind of got used to the first um, three or four. Yeah. Um, being a whole lot of BMWs with massive, well, they're not restrictors, um, BMWs um, with many badges on them and NASA and uh, playing up the, up the front there. Then Janil was six overall, uh, on the, oh, six on the day stage, 1631 behind. Mm -hmm. A couple of the other ones, Mr. Wan, um, Ho Ching Man, Wan, uh, number 318, he's, he's in a buggy from China. He came in in eighth position, which I thought was actually really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Bernerton Brink, 25 minutes off. Then Sebi Loeb in 11th. Now we'll find out why 11th yesterday is significant. Ooh, excuse me. Um, it's, he was 28 minutes and 27 seconds behind. Um, Peter Hansel yesterday saw stars. He did? <laughs> yeah, because he went off the end. We've seen a couple of those where the guys go off the end of the a dune and mm -hmm. it's quite a heavy dip on the other side. Uh, so the car flew off the, the dune and smacked head first into the, um, the sand. And it really was head first. Bonnet got broken, windscreen got a bit smashed, and more importantly, he says that he saw stars. They're calling it whiplash, and uh, saw an interview with him last night, and that's actually not so lucky when you see stars. That is a hell of an impact. Um, it v would be interesting to see how their backs are. Typically, those sort of compression and uh, um, injuries, they they nasty on the back. Backs in racing cars, particularly these off-road vehicles, are, are really bad. And you might ask, what about some padding on the seat and they've got the best padding they can have but like any you'll see on the cars they've got massive travel on shock absorbers and that's so that the energy that's involved so you've got a lot of speed in a vertical way the energy can be dissipated over time and because we like maths and science yeah for those of you who are into the maths and science and physics part of it you know that if you have a lot of energy that's dissipated in a very short time, you have a very high shock loading, it's, or the G loading. So the suspension allows the car to land properly, and the suspension's going through quite a lot of, of travel. But if you don't land on the suspension and you land nose first, there's not a lot of distance that things can go, because <laughs> it's solid. And then you, the, the humans um, need, still need to stop. And that's where the little bit of stretch in the seat belts and stretch in the body and the neck and the everything just goes um, that's not really a nice thing but the and the padding on the seats for the vertical um, bumps is you can't have there's a there's a maximum movement of the the oh, and thickness of the padding so that you can't the driver can't move down too much uh, yeah because if you move down then your seat belts go loose and if the downward movements followed by a forward movement then your seat belts are useless so it's kind of a hell of a trade-off where the most fragile part of a racing car, an off-road racing car, Gary, mm -hmm. are the people. 
and That's you true. now the science of keeping these people safe mm -hmm. because a lot of them are they're not 20 anymore okay they've got about well not quite as much gray hair as you because nobody's got as much gray hair as you not even me i've got two gray hairs in my head <laughs> That's a long story if I've heard oh, one. Oh, Gary, you've got to be <laughs> optimistic because do you know how you know you're going to eat cherries next week? Tell me. you plant cherries today. Okay. So you're planting grey hairs today. Well, so they say. Anyway, so Loeb got a bit, I mean, um, Peter Hansel got a little bit... Um, of a whiplash or something like that? Yeah, they okay. call it whiplash. Um, he's, anyway, he, he, yeah, his brain got shook up, which is also not a good thing because concussion and mm -hmm. is a bit is a thing it's real it's a bh and if you believe anybody who's involved in any kind of sport with any kind of impact from soccer players to horse riding to racing car drivers to even darts players <laughs> they should go to and and the kind of whiplash there's that toyota advert where when they land and it's kind of a, a bit a bit edgy on the thing where as a car lands the driver's heads go th like this and then the, those meerkats they also do this that's the kind of thing that gives you whiplash and it extends these muscles geez gary i've got waterproofing all over my my hands here i hope that there's no rain please don't rain my waterproofing is going to um, rush well, away okay so that's yesterday yes um, <coughs> which gave us overall pizgonski apart from what we saw there mm -hmm. alraji um, NASA's big mate uh, is in 8th, Prokop 9th, and Carlos f uh, 5 hours 15 minutes off Janelle, 6 hours 52 minutes off the lead, which brings us, boom, into stage 8, which is today's stage. And they're going from San Juan de Macona mm -hmm. to Pisco. And at Pisco, the cool thing, and we were discussing it after the show yesterday, Gary, yeah. is that with all of these, they've had multiple nights in areas great cost saving for um for the dakar organizers because right. you don't have to move the caravan all the way along but it's also a lot easier on the service crews so the service crews aren't de um, decamping and bolting to the next one and then setting up again they've got an opportunity to get there set up mark out their space of where they're going um uh, all the beds and that sort of thing and set up camp properly and it gives them more time to organize the trucks and, and all the other stuff that, that happens in, in, the, in the background. The stage today, and they're quite far into the stage, but I think it's quite important to go through what, what it is. A total of 575 kilometers yeah. with 360 kilos of racing. Okay. So the liaisons aren't very long. And again, they're talking about using a lot of the area that they've used before. So the roads mm -hmm. are churned up. the multiple tracks all over the place. So navigation is going to be very difficult. And then something that the Dakar organizers like to do is they like to, to show like, wow, we proper organize and they make things tough. So they make it very, very difficult from a navigational point of view, from a waypoint point of view, and from a routing. We've seen some of the pictures where there's some gorges and once one of the vehicles gets into the gorge and you catch up, if you get stuck, you all get stuck and you all lose time. So. We've seen that today with Peter Hansel losing 12 odd minutes and it's the same uh, uh, between waypoint three and four but earlier on and all oh, this wind's blowing my notes around Saints, um, Bernatin Brink and then Nikolaev uh, uh, and Cyril Dupre all got lost and stuck in the, the exactly the same area um, and so they, they lost a whole lot of time. The, the racing at the moment in the cars I just, I mean, I, I absolutely love this. The start was, they took the top 10 cars, the top 10 bikes, okay. and the top five trucks. Trucks, yeah, there yeah, you got it, Gary, thanks. Because I nearly said the bad word again, but it, this one was, it started with a ta. So the trucks were there. No, but I can't say fa, 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 fa. I didn't well, say you're, anything. You're not a cat. No, they stutter. Eh? <laughs> fa, 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 go away. Um, so... <laughs> the top 10 cars started, or the, you have car, bike, truck, car, bike, truck, car, bike, truck, until the top 10 uh, cars and bikes and top 5 trucks have gone. And then the guy who finished 11th yesterday starts. So the guy who finished 11th yesterday, who was he? That was Sebi Loeb. So he started about two and a half hours. My gosh, the wind is coming back. 
two and a half hours um, after um, Stefan Peter Hansel started the stage. So when you're looking at the timing, mm -hmm. it's like, oh my God, Loeb's not there, so he can't be winning. But, well, he's not there anyway because he's not going that fast. He's, um, he was, he'd lost, at the first waypoint, he'd lost two minutes. Um, so right now, as they've gone through waypoint five, Gary, yeah. you've got Nasso, who again is effectively first on the road. He's ahead of Przgonski by four odd minutes, 4.19 ahead of Nanny Roma, 4.22, so very close there with Janil, and then 11 minutes, 49 with Peter Hansel. The previous waypoint, Peter Hansel was 14 minutes behind, so he's made up three minutes in, in that yeah. section, so he's pinning it. So that's what's happening at the moment. Effectively, NASA is leading Peter Hansel by 43 minutes, and then and leading Nanny Roma by 45 minutes. There's two more racing days left, but it's Dakar. Anything can happen, as happened in the box, Gary. Yes. Did uh, you see that lovely handoff there? Eh? Yeah, very well I'm done. Nice, nicely done, young man. Yeah, unfortunately, overnight leader, Ricky Brabbock on a Honda, suffered the fame fa same fate as last the year. Fame fate? Yeah, the fame fate. Same fate as last year where he broke a motor. So he's out of Dakar. Um, That's a bummer. Okay, hell. and he broke it as just off the DSS, about 37 kilometers off the DSS, which is a start. So it didn't even make it into, into waypoint one. And so he's out of Dakar, which is sad because it's the second year that Honda is not going to finish on the podium. So the boys are not too happy. Oh, so it was another Honda engine that went bang. <laughs> Do you think they had some of the Formula One guys that they fired when they couldn't get the original I trust engine? You to, trust you to pick that up and go with it. Or have they got the McLaren guys working on it? <laughs> because I'm led to believe that a lot of the failures of the Honda engine early were as a legacy of McLaren interfering in engine design. I'm led to believe, some yeah, say. Yeah, led to believe. But besides, Sources. Yeah, besides that, for the South Africans, we still have uh, Ross Branch out there. That's he, another tremendous. Yes, he came in an 18th overall, but he's leading his P1 in the Rookie Challenge, which is quite a feat, being his first time over there. And then we have Kenneth Gilbert on the Husqvarna. He's in 29th place yesterday. And then we have Stuart Gregory. Now, Stuart Gregory is running the uh, Motel Originals. He's currently sitting in P15. I tell you what, I've actually got a chat. I managed to find something on the net. It's actually quite interesting listening to, uh, to um, Stuart Greggy. So we're going to try and play this video for you guys. It's around about 10 minutes, so have a listen and, uh, and enjoy it. Does the camera go off? Of course it goes off, eh? Mm. Hey guys, uh, yeah, stage, uh, stage six done. Yeah, stage six, yeah. Three more days to go, so uh, no, today went, went okay. Uh, a little bit easier than yesterday, but long section of dunes, probably 100 k's of dunes. So, uh, yeah, I struggled, I struggled a lot in the dunes. And I just got no confidence, they're pretty scary. Uh, I look on TV and watch the top guys, they just look, make it look easier and they jump in things and that, but it's really intimidating. Uh, it was pretty steep. Oh, here's my bike here under wraps. So, I did all my work a little bit earlier. So, all the other guys are hard at work. Uh, here's James Ferguson. Uh, Aussie friend. Uh, so yeah, uh, I didn't enjoy it. Uh, I must say, uh, last two days hasn't been fun. I'm just going through the motions, so three days left. But uh, yeah, the dunes were tough, and then in between, it's just fish, fish, and uh, the cars come all in past you, and you just can't ride it. So yeah, it's uh, not the greatest day today. I must say, uh, feel a little bit bummed. Uh, it's a bit overrated, but uh, yeah, it's one of those things. I would say for all my enjoy riding friends, uh, yeah, I'll go. It's uh, a little bit overrated, Dakar. Romaniacs on that, and that's worth it. I must say, this is, uh, this is a different kettle of fish. And if you like going fast in the sand, then yeah, I'll come here. But uh, yeah, it's a different story. But uh, yeah, I'm here to get to the end and get to the finish. So uh, yeah, three more days, finish it. 360 k's tomorrow. They say it'll be the harder than yeah, today again to finish what I did. Yeah, three more days to go. So uh, yeah, keeping strong. Here to get to the finish, so uh, yeah, let, let's do this thing. Bikes all prepped, new tire, change oil, oil filter, everything good to go. So uh, getting to bed, we've got to be up at four o'clock tomorrow to load the truck, and uh, another day, another day, another day of racing. Thanks for all the sport cars, uh, really awesome. I must say, I read the messages in the morning when I get up, so uh, 
appreciate the support back home and uh, yeah, hopefully you uh, enjoy uh, the video there. I think there's a bit of a day in the life there, It'll probably be on TV here. Yeah? They've shown it once or twice here, yeah? so uh, yeah, I'm getting some cool coverage here, which is really awesome. Out for today and uh, catch you all tomorrow. Cheers. Good morning, guys. Yeah, thanks everyone for the messages. Uh, yeah, up and at it. So we never give up, so we'll be there till the end. Uh, yeah, sorry, yes, that was a bit uh, somber. I was just, I was just a bit irritated. There was a track there we rode yesterday for the third time. So uh, I think that's my frustration. We're just riding the same tracks. Uh, the 60Ks was the same as what we did before. So, hey, how's it going? So, uh, yeah, I just come all this way. You, know, you want to do DAC on, you just ride around, riding around on the same tracks. It's, it's probably my frustration, eh? And they're just so chewed up after all the cars. It's, it'd be nice to have something new. So, uh, yeah, today we, is, is back to Pisco and uh, they're really telling us a lot of the tracks are the same as what we did on day two. So yeah, I think let's just get through it. It's uh, going through the motions and uh, yeah, three more days, three more riding days and we'll be at the end. But uh, yeah, thanks for the motivation. Feeling pretty tired. I think I look fairly tired. Uh, Joe, we, we've got to get there. Cheers. <laughs> That's what? a bit of a cuck comment. Well, really, I mean, you know, the man's first time over there. He's doing pretty well. And uh, like I said, he was sitting in, in 78th overall at the end of last night. He's lying P15 in the originals. And um, I take my hat off. The guy's been there and he's done it. And uh, let's, oh, very hope good, he, but let's hope he keeps my, it together. And, and my version. And gets that, gets that uh, KTM onto the... I admire anybody who's got the, the guts, first of all, to enter, second of all, to go and do it, and third of all, to carry on. But there's a saying that goes that if you find it boring, you're not going fast enough. What position is he in? He was in... Uh, yesterday, he was in uh, 78th. I'll give you today. 78th. Yeah. And so, clearly, you can make... Even walking in a straight line in a shopping center a hell of exciting if you just speed up a bit. Yeah, he's currently... He's just gone through waypoint one, and he's currently in uh, 69th position. Uh, sorry. Uh, he, he got up to 69th position, and he's now down to 82 position overall. Okay, no, I'm just saying. I always thought that... I tell you what, take my hat off to the guy, um, but you want to make life less boring, go faster. Pin it. Brew. Gary, yes. in the um, second chance, Shamir Variawa, I'm now found where the second chance timing is. <laughs> it's fantastic when you find your way down a maze. The maze that is the official Dakar website. It's built for people who've of advanced um, intelligence, which is why it's taken me a long, long time to actually work it out. Interesting, some of the people doing it. Atlanta Terranova uh, is leading the second chance. And Shamir Variawe, number 49, is 10th. He is nine hours behind um, overall. So, two days left. What's going through their minds? Um, somebody, the, one of the comments I heard from somebody high up in one of the teams was that they were breathing razor blades in terms of, <laughs> of the, 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 the tension, the tenseness, the tensiosity that's busy going on. They cocky, I mean, they... Ching King, there we go. Man. A question for you. I notice on this stage we've got AS, a, ASS1 and ASS... <laughs> I knew it. What, what is the you main know, difference between those two? Every time... Um, I don't know the answer properly. <laughs> Gary finds it and he leaves me to hang and dry. Gary, it's very simple. Must be a refueling point. No, so. they've got, um, there are intermediate timing points and that is one of the intermediate timing points that they've got. Some call it CP4 or CP3, other one ASS1. Um, it's the first arrival at a, at, a, at, a, at a point that they've got. Normal, okay. what they sometimes do if there's a, a neutralization zone, in that neutralization zone, they will get the cars when they come into the zone and then they'll neutralize them and take the timing then and then release the timing as they go out. And in theory, it should be the same timing. But there's theory and then <laughs> and there's, there's reality. And there's French reality. <laughs> I like that French reality. <laughs> Remember, this is a race run by the Frenchies, for the Frenchies, by, by the, the Frenchies. Frenchies. <laughs>
and the diesels. And Frenchmen love diesels because, and that's part of the cock that's going, oh man, part of, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up, oh. Okay. Reggie, those Spaniards are going to eat for a year, brother. <laughs> okay, let me just regroup. Part of the stuff that's going down, and you need to go back to the history of the frogs. I mean, apart from getting drilled by the English and then beating the English and having some oak with an arm and all the yeah. rest of it and then eating cake and off with their heads. And I mean, it's a, f a magnificent, so colored history of the French. They decide in their wisdom, and this goes to the why di are diesel cars so popular. It's actually very easy, Gary. Why? It's a frickin' French. That wasn't 10 rand for the thing. It was frickin'. Frickin's <laughs> in the dictionary. It's not like... <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> the filter word. So the French decide in their wisdom that petrol is bad, diesel is good, they've got a deal somewhere with someone for diesel, so they make the price of diesel a schlode, that's not swearing either, it's a no. technical term, a scientific term, a schlode less than petrol. So all the manufacturers get very clever and they scheme, hmm, hold on a minute, why don't, if petrol, if diesel is so expensive and petrol so other way the around. other way around. That yeah, diesel so cheap, petrol so expensive. Let's what, build diesel. They have engine. a brainwave. Let's build diesel cars. Yeah. Because you don't have to have be that refined with a diesel. You just build any bloody thing that burns oil and it's a hunk of cock earlier aye, on. Aye, 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 aye. And they build this, these things and they sell loads of them. All the Europeans turn around and they sell diesels coming out of their ears. Then they realize, hold on a minute, diesels are actually so bad for the environment. Mm -hmm. They are terrible because they do two things. They then belch big things big of, smoke. of smoke and yeah. that is soot. It's it's not even it's like fine dust. Yes. Smoking is more healthier than following a diesel. So they pump out bucket loads of of of, of particles. Mm -hmm. Um and but worse than that, they put out nitrous uh, inox which is one ox one nitrogen and one <laughs> oxygen NOx. Go to your science manual. There's a periodic table. That doesn't mean the tables are murin every now and then. It means that it's a whole, it's a relationship. It is the ultimate family tree of stuff. Go and have a look at your periodic table and tell me which row unobtainium sits in. It's right next to <laughs> silicon and just under happiness. But you know, on the difficult side. Yeah. So now hold yes, on. Yes. So then diesels become more of a popular. Okay. And throughout <coughs> the world and everybody thinks it's the main thing because the frickin' Europeans decide, or the Frenchies in particular. Yeah. And then what they decide now is, yes. hold on a minute guys, now we've got, so Macron, Smoothie arrives into power. Everybody loves him, but now everybody hates him. And he's got a belter of a wife, by the way. And uh, apparently, oh. some say, it is alleged. I said belter. Yeah. So, and I don't know, five minutes, but I've got to tell you this. So yes. now they decide, let's equalize the price of petrol and, and diesel. And the frogs don't like it. So now they're getting the murin again. And then our government decides, hey, do you know what the cool thing idea is? This eating cake story. <laughs> Great. Do you know what comes with eating cake? Trust you to find it. Chop their heads off. Yeah. Chop their heads off. But you know, I've got a video. I you have, Gary? I, yeah, I managed to find Hello? it. I managed to M find it today. G. No, no, there's a video we're going to play. Gary's bored. Because today, no, no, today, today is actually quite a great day in the sense of it because I've got a video of Joey Evans, and the reason I'm going to do that is this year on this specific date, probably roughly the similar time to what we're talking now. Joey Evans rode up onto the podium to get his finishing medal for Dakar in 2017. Hello, it would have been cool to have him here, Gary. Did our production department miss that trick? No, no. It's playing right now. No, I mean Joey here with us. Is there sound? Uh, no, there's not. Well, maybe, uh, look, look, the quality's not great, guys, but it gives you some idea of another South African. This is the guy that wrote the book Parrot to Dakar. He had a bad accident, badly injured. He was a paraplegic and he's fought his way back so that he can walk and ride a bike. He now gets back onto that bike. He goes around, he tells the world what's going on, and uh, he's a great motivational speaker. If you ever get a chance, buy his book and read it. It's a fantastic read. But that's just something that happened in Dakar on this day involving a South African. Back to you, Gary, sir. Th yeah, th thanks for just like, 
what do you do after you've done your washing? You put it up to dry. <laughs> you hang it out to dry. Hang it so, out, yeah. I think that some of the th messages that come through from Joey, and we had him last year, we, we had, had a really couple of good t discussions with him. That's right. Was that principally you, your outcome of your life is decided about, and it's a whole lot of little decisions that you mm. make. And you've got to make every now and then you come across with a decision. Do I carry on or do I give up? And do I, where do I want to go? And once you've got that, where do I want to go? Because if you don't know where you're going, you'll get there. No, you won't. Well, but you don't know where you're going. So then you can't get there. Yeah, but you can because you don't know that you got there already. <laughs> but if you don't know where you're going, you'll eventually go into ever-decreasing circles until you disappear up that place where the sun don't shine. So the message that came out of, out of the, the book and talking to Joey was define a, a goal and that it's not, I mean, for a guy who's lying in a hospital, foobar, just about dead, to make a decision, I'm going to race Dakar. I mean, a lot of us would turn around and say, you are off your tiny little yeah, rocker. True. But it gave him a, they call it a BHAG, a big, fat, hairy, audacious goal. And he never stuck never deviated from it i take my hat off i salute you joey there's another guy gary and i did some research on it who is paralyzed properly paralyzed from the waist down yeah he's doing dakar with four of his mates the guy can't stop the bike he hasn't got any legs to put down mm -hmm. so his mates have got to be there to stop him from falling over so it's these moments that are absolutely inspirational so excuse me when i hear somebody say it's boring and I my retort to that is go to Joey go to this other guy ask them if it was boring at any time Agreed. I doubt it I agree and the other you. thing is whenever life gets boring pin it brew and it'll get exciting that's right. my little okay. just a couple of guys in line um, Angelo read, he says reading his book right right now what a read great guy yeah. thank you very much will you add them high out there uh, Gareth Williams uh, Colin agrees with you I don't see that the, the uh, leaders are bitching about the route. And then, no, uh, they do, but they bitch in a different way <laughs> because they may say it's a little bit too, too difficult and, and they've got professionals who know the road book. And I mean, a couple of D Daniel Eleanor was, or Daniel Eleanor was throwing his toys out the cot where they want to go and prepare for, um, for Monty. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You, you don't never see, leaders never complain. Now yeah, we've got Lee Phillips in line. <coughs> Peter Bell, thanks very much for joining us. Sparky Bright, all the way down in PE. Nice to have you with us. And uh, Francois Cousins has joined us. And you guys are challenging and using the comment, se the comment section of you to challenge people to donate. Are they? Yeah. Are they challenging each yeah. other? Terry Wilford's challenged one and the one guy said... I'll so hold on, how much did Wilford is putting in? Uh, Wilford hasn't notified the, the, the okay, comment I, section. No, hold on. I see there, it says Wilford yes. has agreed to put 500 Rand in. Terry. Yeah, why Tell not? You what, for 500 Rand, you are the biggest donator. And Gary, make a note there. Terry Wilford's in for 500 bucks. Terry, Goodyear Tires, you're a great man. My, my respect for you has just gone immense. The dogs will love it. Right, guys. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to put up the, the, the actual account number, try and leave it up there for a little while, of where you can actually donate. As I say, it doesn't come to Colin and I. It goes into a specific uh, account number for the Spaniels. Um, I will screen grab that, that count and I will post it into the, into the, into the comment section that stays there a long, long time. But, uh, it's for the rescue dogs that, are, that need rescuing from people because people don't treat the animals the way they right. should. That's right, yeah. I was going to say a word, but then I thought, that would be, let's be nice. <laughs> you just don't want to fill the jar too early. Let's be nice. No, Gary, <laughs> in two days, it's gone up to, I cannot believe that I've said a bad word 28 times. In two days. What a fuck. I mean. There we go. I, no, 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 no. It's half a word. It's five rand. I can't believe it. But it's for a good cause. And one day, I will get with Reggie and we'll. Well, it'll actually be very soon, by the way. Is it? Yeah. Lacquer. Because we, we, we're, going, we going? We, we're going to place he's going to play and then we, and then we, and then we got to luck. Work are we going, him. Gary, are we going to the um, Jaguar Samoa Hill Club? We are. We're going, we're going up the hill. We, so we cracked the invite. 
Yeah, but I don't know what we're going up in yet. It could be a bicycle for all I know. <laughs> You're going to walk. Yeah. But listen, guys, I'm, uh, guys, it is coming to the end of the show. But listen, there is fa- super fantastic, exciting news coming out on the social media platforms over the next couple of days. Please watch it. As I said, we're trying to get Calvin with us on Thursday night. Don't forget, Thursday night we're at Motor Motor in Pretoria. Please yeah, come and join down us. Down Linwood Road, corner yeah. of Linwood and General yeah. Louis Bosa. Yeah. Is it Louis Bosa? Uh, no, 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 just uh, uh, General. What's it? What's it? Corner road? Linwood and General Louis Boerter Road. Because Louis Boerter is in Joburg, so it could be a bit of a T junction if Louis Boerter is here. The address, is on, the address is on the screen right now. So that, so that is uh, Moto Moto. Yes. Cheeseburgers, Gary. Cheese. Do, do they have draft? Cheeseburgers, bitterly cold refreshments. <laughs> My, my my life, I'm a simple guy. Mm. Give me some unobtainium, some carbon fiber, carbon fiber, and silicon, silicon, and cable ties, cable ties, duct tape, beer, and and a cheeseburger. Getting and kinky my life is made. Yeah, hey? yeah. And uh, so watch out for the news. <laughs> and part of the news that will be released on Friday, we will have an interview with that guy next week, Wednesday. Tomorrow night we're coming to you from a different location. We're going to be speaking to a man that's done decor. We're going to be sitting in his lovely offices. Thursday night we're at uh, Motor Motor. And Friday is our last decor show for Wave Jello, where we will recap everything that's happened. And who knows, we may have one, one, other, one or two other exciting people with us if they can make it. And then uh, we go back to normal racing. So for me... Racing is never normal. It's always awesome. Yeah fantastic stuff so from me from this show thank you very much for watching really appreciate all your support guys and keep up the hard work out there all of you join us tomorrow six o'clock for episode 59 of waved yellow and episode number second last of dakar for 2019 cheers cheers